Among NASCAR's 75 million fans, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is far and away the most popular driver. And that should come as no surprise, for there's a lot to like about this soft-spoken 29-year-old country boy from North Carolina. It's not just because he's the son of NASCAR legend Dale Earnhardt Sr. Fact is, Jr. is as pure a stock car driver as there ever was, born and bred to do one thing. This is the man. How you doing? I'm Mike Wallace. Yes, sir. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Nice to meet you. What do I call you? Uh, call me Junior. Junior! 38 weekends a year, you'll find Junior in the red Budweiser number eight car, racing for millions in prize money on the NASCAR circuit. But it's not just the money he's after, it's the winning. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins the Golden Corral 500. Something he's done four times this season alone, including NASCAR's biggest race, the Daytona 500 last February. Here he comes. To tell Junior's story, you must come here. To Daytona Motor Speedway in Florida. It's our favorite venue for all the drivers. Why? Well, we start our season off here. It's kind of like our Super Bowl. We have our, we kind of start our year off with a bang. Junior has a lot of history at this track. And to talk about it, he took me on a tour in this new Corvette at 120 miles an hour. Does this feel like 120? Doesn't it feel like interstate speed? Junior won the 500 here on just his fifth attempt. And the fans are going nuts in Daytona. Something this man, his dad, Dale Earnhardt Sr., won only once in 23 tries. Sr. was a seven-time NASCAR Cup champion, winner of 76 races, known as the Intimidator. But his career and his life ended at the 2001 Daytona 500. Driving his black number three Chevy, he was killed instantly when he hit the wall on turn number four during the last lap of the race. Are we going to turn four? Yeah, this is it, right here. Junior was just a couple of hundred yards ahead of his dad in the race, and he saw the wreck in his rearview mirror. You came back some months after your dad died here? Um, yeah, well... I was driving just like today, just like with you. I was taking a bunch of my friends around the track. We pulled over here and, and just sat here for a while, and we got out and laughed and then joked around with each other, talked a little bit, and just kind of, in a way, made kind of peace with it, for lack of a better term. Uh, Junior knows that death and danger are occupational hazards. Two weeks after we left him at Daytona, he crashed during an off week for NASCAR. He was driving a road race in Sonoma, California. Racing just for the fun of it, he says. This was a practice lap in a modified Corvette. An in-car camera caught the crash, which did not look like much at first. But it was. It looks bad. Yeah, it was bad. They have sensors in the car, and it went from 115 degrees to 750 degrees in a second and a half. And then the sensor burned out. And uh, so it was probably a lot hotter than that. It took him 14 seconds to get out of the car. He suffered second degree burns on his chin and neck and his legs. Did it occur to you that you might not make it out of that? Uh, yeah, that, I mean, that crosses your mind. I mean, at that moment, you think of everything. You know, you think this could, I could die here. You know, this could be. This could be how I go, you know, this would really suck if that's the way I'm going out. When you see that footage, it's, you know, it's pretty spooky to see uh, one of your buddies uh, on fire inside a race car like that. Champion driver Tony Stewart is one of Junior's best friends and fiercest NASCAR rivals. Is Junior the most popular driver in the circuit? Definitely, without a doubt. Why? Uh, I think it's his personality. I mean, I, obviously some of it's his last name, but... He's kind of grown out of the shadow of his father now. I mean, he had his own fan base when he came in. Uh, but once his father passed on, those fans were left without a hero. And the natural, the natural pick w to, to go to next was Dale Jr. And, and he's so much like his father that Wait it was an easy minute. pick Wait for those minute. people. There's nothing intimidating about Jr. Sure there is. You, you drive out there on the racetrack with him <laughs> and, t and tell me he's not intimidating at times. He's his father, just in a younger body. There you go. You can see his father's aggressive style in every race Junior runs. It wasn't always that way. 
As a child, Junior was more interested in goofing off than growing up. And because of that, his dad sent him to military school. He was the intimidator. Did he ever intimidate you? Oh, yeah. There were times when he would walk into the house, and, uh, I mean, I liked being around him, so I didn't go the other way, but I stood on the other side of the room, you know. Serious? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he was, he might have had a bad day. Racing looked pretty good to Junior after two years in military school. Here he is at 15 years old. Well, I, I, you know, I want to be a race car driver someday. It's a great sport. I love it to death, you know. It's, you know, it's all I've ever known, racing. At 17, he was racing weekends on the local circuits. Seven years and dozens of wrecks later. And around goes Earnhardt, up in the air and over. He made it to NASCAR's big league, where he quickly won fans by the truckload. We saw that for ourselves touring the infield at Daytona last July. <laughs> Man, it's something else. Hey, Dale! Figure it out. Here with his fans, he's as much a rock star as a racer. The fact is, he is one of them. If I wasn't racing, this is exactly what I'd be doing. Oh, yeah. I'd be running around here somewhere, laid up in one of these pools. It's like a good time to me. You're serious? You, you just enjoy this lifestyle? Yeah, it's fun. I mean, I was going to races as a little kid. I'm a fan first, yeah. you know. NASCAR fans are a special crowd. They reflect the sport's southern roots. Are NASCAR fans Republicans? Yeah. Are they white? Majority. It's changing more and more, but it's still, you know, you still go to the races and you still see the rebel flags in the infield. You still see, you know, the aggressive southeast a little bit at the racetrack. You still do, but... Aggressive Southeast? Yeah. What does you know, that mean? The, you know, the guy that still flies his rubber flag and, and, you know, pretty proudly. That's not you. That's not me. And it never really was me. Politically, though, Junior does side with a voting bloc known as NASCAR Dads. You're a Republican. You're in favor of George W. Bush to be re-elected. And yet... You took your crew to see that Michael Moore picture, how come? Well, <clears throat> because... Fahrenheit 9-11. Yeah, I went to see that. I was, Why were you um, so curious to see it? Well, I just wanted to know, uh, you know, I, I like hearing both sides of the argument. I thought the movie was well done, but uh, my dad was a Republican, I'm a Republican. So, yeah. you know, not that I came out of there going, I ain't voting for Bush again. And, you know, that didn't happen. And I didn't expect that to happen. I just wanted to go enjoy the movie because I knew Mike, Michael Moore would try to push a few buttons, and I just wanted to see how hard he mashed them. Ritz Crackers is a big one for you, yes? Junior's product endorsements add millions to his income. Forbes said he made $20 million last year, more off the track than on. But it takes a lot of money to build a NASCAR winner. This is the headquarters of Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, the facility his father built in Mooresville, North Carolina. They call it the Garage Mahal, home to 250 employees. Junior has some 15 versions of his car being built at any given time. Different cars for NASCAR's different tracks. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, isn't it? We got more cars than everybody probably imagines. Every time I bring somebody in here that's never been around a race shop, they don't expect to see so many cars. A few miles away from the garage is his new home. It's like a $90,000 modular home. You'd never know it. It's a beautiful house. Yeah, he gets about four days a week here doing virtually, and I mean virtually, the same thing he does when he's away. He races. Okay, you're clear of pit lane. This is the track we're going to run this weekend. There is online racing. You can join pickup races. You get about, you know, 50 races. You, you get just... beaten often? Yeah. <laughs> All time. And then there are his go-karts. He's number 55 that he and his buddies race on the track he built in his backyard. And he admits those toys often take a front seat to his love life. I was in the, uh, in the bathroom here. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether this belongs to you. Dating for dummies. Yeah. We this all... Is your, this is your handbook? Not my handbook, mm -hmm. but it's... Uh, I, mean, I read it sometimes. Do you? Yeah, it's pretty comical. Tell me about you and dating. Me and dating? Well, I ain't no good at it, but... Uh, Why not? Well, I ain't married, am I? If I was real, real good at it, I'd probably be married by now. Why aren't you any good at it? 
Because I like, I like racing. I like my job. And you don't want to give that up because a lady wants you home. Right. I mean, I look forward to getting married one day, and I like being in a relationship. I like, I like having a girlfriend, but I, you know, it seems to go for about three months, and gets it gets to a point to where they're trying to drive the boat instead of me. You know, I run the damn show. You know what I mean? You're the boss. Yeah, I'm the boss. Like his father, he's a man's man. To this day, three and a half years after his dad's death, the connection between junior and senior is downright spooky. You think your dad was watching when you ran into trouble at Sonoma? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, he would have to be. I think he had a lot to do with me getting out of that car. You do? Honest with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know how else to put it. I don't want to put some weird you know, psycho twist on it like he was pulling me out or anything, but he had a lot to do with me getting out of that car. From the movement I made to unbuckle my belt to land on the stretcher, I have no idea what happened, how I got out. Well, what does your dad have to do with it? I don't have an explanation for it other than when I got into the infield care center, I was, I had my, I had uh, my PR man by the, by the collar screaming at him to find the guy that pulled me out of the car. He was like, nobody helped you get out. And I was like, that's strange because I swear somebody was, somebody had me underneath the underneath my arms and was carrying me out of the car. I mean, I swear to God. And that was your dad? I don't know. You tell me. It was, it freaks me out today just talking about it. Just gives me chills. Coming up next, a Freedom Freight train heads toward the U.S. border and Dan Rather is along for the ride. 